in this video we are going to discuss about Hamming code Hamming code is an error detection and correction approach so by using Hamming code technique we can detect the error as well as we can correct the error also error detection and correction approach generally we know that sender sends a message to the receiver there is a possibility that some of the bits in the message may be lost or the sum of the bits in the message may be changed some zeros will be converted to one and ones will be converted to zeros okay in that occasion the receiver can detect the error with the help of Hamming code approach as well as the receiver can detect can correct the error also so in which position the error was produced okay that correction will also be done with the help of the Hamming code approach okay so now let us see uh, how we can implement the uh, Hamming code approach. Uh, let us assume that here uh, the message is represented by M where the message may contain any number of bits. It may be 4 bits or 8 bits or 16 bits or 32 or 64 bits. But for our comfortable purpose, but for simple example, I am taking the size of the message as 4 bits. Okay, I am taking the size of the message as 4 bits. In this example, uh, let message is 1010, 1010. Uh, so in this approach, what will happen is, sender sends uh, the message with parity bits, okay? So some parity bits will be added to the message. These parity bits will also be called as redundant bits. Parity bits are also called as redundant bits. Redundant means some extra bits will be added, okay? So what the sender will do? Sender sends the message with parity bits to the receiver. So how many parity bits will be sent? Okay. So how many parity bits will be sent? That depends upon the message here. So how many parity or redundant bits will be sent? Uh, so for that purpose, uh, we use a formula. The formula is this one. 2 power r is greater than or equal to m plus r plus 1. So in order to know how many parity bits the sender has to send, it uses this formula, okay? Here R means redundant bits, number of redundant or parity bits. M means the size of the message. In this example, the size of the message is 4 bits. So let us assume that R value is 1. If R value is 1, then 2 power 1, that is 2 is greater than or equal to, what is M? 4 bits. What is R value? 1. So 4 plus 1 plus 1. 4 plus 1 plus 1. So that is nothing but 6. 2 greater than or equal to 6. This condition is false. So R should not be 1. Let us consider that let R is 2. Then what will happen? 2 power 2. 2 power 2 means 4. So 4 is greater than or equal to. What is R value now? 7. 4 plus 2 plus 1 means 7. So 4 is greater than or equal to 7. This condition is also false. Now let us assume that R is 3. So 2 power 3. 8 is greater than or equal to. 4 plus what is R value? 3. So 4 plus 3 7, 7 plus 1 8. So 8 is greater than or equal to 8. We have greater than as well as equals to. So 8 is greater than or equal to 8. Condition is true. Okay. So the number of redundant bits are 3. So the sender has to send the message as well as it has 3 parity bits to the sum and it send it to the receiver. Okay. So how many parity bits the sender has to add? That depends upon the size of the message. If the size of the message is 4 bits, then we have to send 3 bits, 3 parity bits. Whereas if the size of the message is 16 bits, then R value or the parity bit value may be some other value. Okay. Uh, so in which position we have to add the parity bits? Generally, parity bits will be added. Parity bits will be added. Yet, yet powers of 2. So yet powers of 2, the parity bits will be added. So powers of 2 means the first power is 2 power 0, second power is 2 power 1, third power is 2 power 2 likewise. Here we have 3 parity bits only. So that's why these 3 positions are enough. Okay. We know what is 2 power 0. 2 power 0 means 1, 2 power 1 means 2, 2 power 2 means 4. Okay. Now let us uh, uh, write the message now. Uh, let us construct the code word. Code word is nothing but the message. Message. So totally we have... 4 bits present in the message as well as 3 parity bits. So totally the size of the message is 7 bits. 
So first let us write the position numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is the message. And where the parity bits will be there? At one position. So at one position we have P1 parity bit. Next, at two position. At two position we have parity bit. Let it be P2. Next, at fourth position we have parity bit. Let it be P1 is over, P2 is over. So the next number is P3. So let it be P3. So we have three parity bits present at one position, two position, four position. Okay. Now let us write the message. What is the message here? 1010. One, zero, one, zero. So 1010. One, so now we have to determine what is P1, what is P2, what is P3. Here how many parity bits are there? Three parity bits are there. So the size of the parity bit is 3. So 3 means with 3, how many how many numbers the sender can send? 2 power 3 numbers. 2 power 3. So what is 2 power 3? 8 numbers. 8 numbers the sender send. Okay. So totally we can have 8 combinations. The minimum value is 0. So from 0 to 7, we have some parity bits. Okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So these are nothing but decimal numbers. And the corresponding parity bits are P1, P2, P3. So how we can represent 0 in binary notation? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, 1, 4, 1, double, 0, 5, 1, 0, 1, 6, 1, 1, 0, 7, 1, 1, 1. So these are nothing but positions. Now we have to determine what is P, what is P2, what is P3. Let us determine what is P1. Here we are using the even parity. So here, here also the Hamming code may use us either even parity or odd parity. Even parity means the number of ones should be even. Whereas odd parity means the number of ones should be odd. Okay. So for that purpose, here we are finding what is P1 value. So we have to observe this column where ones are there. Okay. So one is available yet number one. Okay. So one comma next one is available yet third position three comma one is available yet fifth position five comma one is available yet seven. So with the help of these four bits, we can get P1 value. Now let us analyze where what is P2. So for that purpose, we have to determine, we have to check P2 column where ones are there. So one is available yet two position. Next one is available yet three position. One is available yet six position. Next one is available yet seven position. Now let us check what is P3 value. So for that we have to observe this column. So we have ones yet four, five, six. 7 positions. So 4, 5, 6, 7 positions. Okay. So these are nothing but positions. These are nothing but parities. Okay. So now let us uh, check, let us observe what is P1, what is P2, what is uh, P3 values. So P1 is equal to, P1 is equal to. So what is 1? So at 1 we have P1. At 1 we have P1. At third position we have 0. At fifth position we have 1. Yet 7th position we have 1, okay. At 1 position, 1, 3, 5, 7. At 1 position we have P1. At 3 position we have 0. At 5 position we have 1. At 7 position we have 1. Here the sender and the receiver, before sending the message, they both agree which parity they want to use. Let us assume that here both agreed to use the even parity. Even parity means the number of 1s should be even. If we count here, how many 1s are there? Two ones are there already. So it adds zero to the message. So that there will be no change in number of ones. So after we adding this is zero also, the number of ones are zero only. The number of ones are zero only. So that means the value of P1 is zero. The value of P1 is zero. Now let us check what is P2 value. So what is P1 value now? One. Okay, let us check what is P2 value. So after finding P1, P2, P3, we substitute th those values. So what is P2? 2, 3, 6, 7 positions. So at 2 we have P2. At 3 position we have 0. At 6th position we have 0. At 7th position we have 1. Okay. P2, 2, 3, 6, 7. At 2nd position we have P2. At 3 we have 0. At 6 we have 0. At 7 we have 1. Okay. Here we are using the even parity method. So the number of 1s should be even. Whereas here the message contains only 1. 
So we have to add one more one in order to make this one as even. Okay. So what is P2 value? So P2 value should be 1. So what is P1 value? P1 value is 0. What is P2 value? What is P2 value? P2 value is 1. Next, let us calculate what is P3. So we calculate P3 with the help of the positions 4, 5, 6, 7. So what are 4, 5, 6, 7? P3, 1, 0, 1. P3, 1, 0, 1. So here number of 1s are already even only. So P3 value is 0. So after adding the 0, there is no change. So what is P3 value? The value of P3 is 0. The value of P3 is 0. Now sender sends this message to the receiver. Okay. Sender sends this message to the receiver. Okay. So this message contains 4 bits. In addition to the message, it adds redundant or parity bits to the receiver also. Now let's see what will happen at the receiver side. What will happen at the receiver side. At the receiver side also, uh, it, it calculates parity bits. It calculates parity bits. So what is P1? 1357. 1357. What is P1 value here? 0. Let us assume that this message was delivered to the receiver. This message was delivered to the receiver. So after it receives the message, it calculates the parity, parity bit values. Okay. So how we can get P1? Already we know all that procedure. So P1 means what? 0, double one, 0. 0, double one, 0 means what? The number of 1s are 0 only. So that means it adds 0 to the corresponding message. Next, let us check what is P2. So what is P2? 1, 0, double one. 1, double zero, 1. So 1, double zero, 1 also contains even number of 1s. So the result is 0. Next, P3. So what is P3 value? What is P3 value? 0, 1, zero, 1. So in 0, 1, zero, 1 also, we have even number of zeros. So it, it, here also we got the message as yeah, 0, 0. If all the parity bits are 0, 0, 0, then receiver came to know that there is no error in the message. So receiver accepts the message. Okay. Let us assume that this, this, this bit is modified. Instead of 1, instead of 1, let us assume that message was modified to 0. So instead of 1, so here actually what is the message? 1 is the message. Okay. So instead of 1, let the message is modified to 0. Now let us uh, uh, check how we get the error. Okay. If the parity bits, then we can get other than 0. Then we can get the parity bit values as 1. So now let us calculate the parity bits. So how we can get P1? 1, 3, 5, 7. So what is 1? 0. What is 3 position value? 0. What is 5 position value? 0. What is 7 position value? 1. Okay. So 3 bull 0, 1. 3 bull 0, 1. But the number of 1s should be, but the number of 1s should be even only. So it adds 1 here. So P1 value is 1. So P1 value is 1. Okay. Now let us check P2. So how to get P2? 2, 3, 6, 7. So what is 2, 3, 6, 7? 1, 0, what is 6, 7? 0, 1, 0, 1. So number of 1s are even, number of 1s are even only. So the parity bit is 0 only. Next, what is P3 value? 4, 5, 6, 7. What is 4, 5, 6, 7? 3, bull, 0, 1, 3, bull, 0, 1, 3, bull, 0, 1. So number of 1s are odd. In order to make it as even, it adds 1 here. So now what is the parity result we got here? 1, 0, 1. So the receiver came to know that some of the bits are modified in the receiver. Some of the bits are modified during the transmission. So there is an error. So in this way, at the receiver side, receiver detects the error. So now at which position that error was produced. So in order to know that, simply we have to find out the decimal number of 101. Okay. So here what is the position? P1, P2, P3. Okay. P1, P2, P3. What is P1 value? 1. What is P2 value? 0. What is P3 value? 1. So 101 in decimal notation is 101 in decimal notation is 421. Okay. What is the decimal value? 5. So that means at 5th position that message was modified. Actually at 5th position what is the bit 1? But that 1 is modified to 0. Now what the receiver will do? This receiver will modify that bit to 1. Okay. So in this way at the receiver side receiver detect the error as well as correct the error with the help of the handing code.